Hi, everyone. Sandy Kreisberg, the HBS guru. We've got Joe, Joe Reed here today. Joe, say hi and show your lovely Viz hi, everyone. TV viewers. Hi, everyone. Thank, thanks for having me, Sandy. I appreciate it. Good. Uh, Joe is an interesting case. He's a 30-year-old with seven years of work experience, and he's trying to uh, get an MBA. So th the question that Joe presents is, we've got seven years of work experience, a powerful 770 G GMAT, a 3.58 GPA, and what does that add up to? For instance, can you get into, if you're a white male, can you get into Stanford with a 770 GMAT, a 3.5 GPA, and seven years of work experience at um, very interesting, well-respected, but no-name oil company. Uh, it, 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 like, Joe, correct me, but have people from Pioneer or W Resources applied to business school? Pioneer has sent some people to uh, MBA programs, but mostly uh, local programs. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. So. Joe presents an interesting case. <clears throat> Hell, one of the questions you have to answer, Joe, is why you don't want uh, an EMBA. You've got seven years of work experience. You're sort of the right age. So that's something you're going to have to explain. Sure. So my, my primary reasoning is that I, I want the immersive experience, and uh, I want to enjoy the, the full uh, the full birth and, and breadth of, uh, of the recruiting process and the, the, the building of the, the personal network that occurs in a, a full-time MBA program. Okay, the immersive experience, the, I, I guess that's, the, that's a good explanation. Uh, well, and, and secondarily, um, I, this isn't something that I just now am thinking about. Uh, I, I think it would be something I would include that I saw, I, I was considering pursuing an MBA when I started at W. And I sort of saw two paths diverge, and I thought it would make me a more compelling candidate to have the experience of working for a, a private equity-backed company. It's an interesting question whether or not you won that bet. Uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, you've got the experience. Okay, so let's get down to brass tacks here. Uh, can a white guy get into Harvard Business School with a 770 and a 3.5 GPA from a no-name oil company with the very best reasons for going. Uh, I think that's gonna be hard. Uh, the white male cohort at Harvard is uh, small, it's accomplished, it's younger. And I, I think your chances at Harvard are more like uh, 20, 30%. Particularly for this reason, Harvard does, is not particularly wowed by a 770 GMAT. Sure. Wharton, Wharton and MIT, on the other hand, are wowed by 770 GMATs. They put a lot of faith in them, either because they like it, they like what it does in the magazine rankings, or they just respect it as a predictor of how you're going to do there. And so does Columbia. So I think your chances there are much better. Okay. You can tell your story the way you're telling it. Your explanation of what you're doing, what you've done, it's all very positive. It all makes perfect sense. And they, they, they view themselves as turning out people who go to private equity. Uh, and Booth and Kellogg is the same thing. Uh, you don't strike me as a Kellogg type. Uh, <laughs> that, by that I mean, um, there's not a lot of do-gooder beyond your sure, sure. extracurriculars here. Nothing yeah, that's... Of. I'm, I'm just saying. No, I get that 100%. Yeah. I think your chances that... I, I, I think Harvard's going to be a stretch. I think Wharton... Uh, I think Harvard's going to be a long reach. I think Wharton is going to be a reach. I think MIT, even though it's small... They really go for the 770 and you're their type. I think Columbia might just go for the 770 and the fact that you're 
a totally solid guy who is not going to have any problem getting a job. Sure. I think Kellogg might go, I don't know. He's maybe our type, maybe not. Uh, you, you got any questions on that? So one thing that I've gotten feedback on before is that um, being a, an engineer with no actual private equity, like experience in a private equity shop uh, makes that a harder sell. And perhaps it might be wiser to uh, sort of couch my, my goals as being a little bit more palatable as a, somebody with a, an engineering background. What do you think about that? I, 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 I disagree that those schools care about that you only have an engineering background. They really respect engineering. And I think you would be able to get hired by private equity. So I would put your goals as I'm really interested in uh, um, uh, consulting slash private equity, uh, banking, consulting, private equity, particularly in uh, engineering and even uh, energy uh, space. You know, sure, like, sure. and then, you know, could you name some uh, private equity firms that focus in uh, engineering and energy? Sure. So probably the biggest one is like NGP. Um, and there's some other smaller mid-sized ones that I, I eventually plan to, to come back to Texas. So uh, there's, there's a number of smaller ones here. But as far as name brands, uh, I'd probably need to bone up on some, some well, research I think, there. Well, I think what you discover is a lot of the really big PE firms have a division or a... Right. That's, that's what I've seen is that they have... It's just part of their overall portfolio, not, not their sole focus. Right. So I would educate myself about that. So when you apply, I would sound like... <laughs> your, big, your big attraction to a business school is you've got the 770, which everybody loves, and you're going to be employable. So you have to make it real clear that you, you are employable. Sure. And, and you, 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 your goal is to continue to work in sort of the engineering energy space with now just a management focus. Right, right. So that's, that's the way I present myself and get and educate yourself about that. Sure. Uh, one other question I had is I'd also received some sort of feedback about how much I play up the big bad oil company type vibe since a lot of these schools have a very socially conscious environmentally conscious perspective is that a danger yeah, or is you're, it you're, you're, no no you're gonna you're gonna be both you're good what you're gonna do is work for the big bad oil companies and make them better right <laughs> <laughs> get it i'm interested in uh you know the challenge of dealing with government regulations the challenge of dealing with a green uh, demands both from fe federal and state regulators and the consuming public. And it's a really exciting challenge. Sure. Take on what the new uh, space is for people in the energy business. So you're going to be a, prog you are going to be a progressive energy leader. That's the way you should brand yourself. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I wouldn't, uh, don't talk about big bad oil companies. Right. Well, yeah, I wouldn't exactly no, use no, that no. phrasing. <laughs> Just say, you know, the oil comp, everybody's on the same page you know, within the. Sure. I mean, it, the reality is, world. yeah, right. The reality so is that oil and gas are still necessary, but there's steps that yeah. need to be taken to make it. Yeah. Progressive. Better. Yeah. It's challenging. It's exciting. Green, sure. green, energy. Sure. green energy. We're all. Hey, rah, rah. Yeah. Everybody loves windmills. <laughs> Uh, everybody would love windmills if they could provide, if they didn't make noise and provided <laughs> enough energy for the whole world, but they don't. Uh, sure. I, I'm no expert, but I think uh, petroleum is going to be with us for a long time. Agreed. Uh, so that's the way I present my, and, and the schools know that. Right, right. Okay. So that, that's the way I present myself. Progressive energy guy okay you're you might get into harvard uh it's worth a shot um 
I'll take that. <laughs> well, here's a, you know, here's the Harvard, the Harvard essay is what, what we already have your shtick. What else do you want us to know about you? What would you say? So I've, I've actually watched quite a few of your Fridays with Sandy's. So I've, I tried to do the, uh, the influences exercise as yeah. far as what the biggest influences in my life have been. I can and see how you've got a 770. You're a good, uh, you're a good <laughs> study of what people want. Sure. Uh, so I, th I think the, um, the first major influence in my life is my dad. He, he's also an engineer, but he's an entrepreneur. Um, he's owned a small business since the 80s. It's been uh, fairly successful. I grew up working in it. Uh, this, is, this is kind of my foray into combining entre entrepreneurship and, and growing a business with my engineering background. Perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah you, you could write the whole essay about that. Or okay. is there another influence? Yeah, I had another one um, through working. So he owns a machine shop and through working in his machine shop and then also my experience in, in oil and gas working on a drilling rig. I've had multiple managers in my life who are, don't even have a high yeah, school education. No, drilling rig is a great uh, setting. You should, you should yeah. write a part of the essay about what, what I learned from working on a rig. Yeah, so I, I really want to include that, especially because my sort of supervisor was a guy who didn't even have a GED and worked, you know, bootstrapped his way up. And, and he was a great influence that taught me a lot about uh, what, what was going on on location and how to do it safely, how to do it the right way and, and uh, how to, to work, use hard work to get where you want to be. Okay, you've got a third uh, story? Uh, I guess, well, yeah, this, the third one maybe isn't quite as uh, heart stringy, but uh, the, the company I work for now uh, has gone through one uh, successful sale process where we, we sold all our assets and did a 3x return and uh, seeing the, the nuts and bolts of how that worked uh, and reaping the rewards of it have, has been a very influential process on me. Those are good. Those are three good stories, man. You're, you're, uh, you may make me recalibrate my odds for you at Harvard. <laughs> I'll uh, take it. Anyway, that's, that, that's a great way to present yourself. Okay, you're going to do, you're, 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 I mean, I, I think you're going to get into Wharton, MIT, or Columbia and Booth for sure. So, uh, and, you know, you, you might get into Harvard. Wharton would be a great place for a guy like you. It's big. You'd yeah. like it, uh, et cetera. So. Great. Great. That's my take. Well, I appreciate okay. it very much. Good luck. Okay. See you next week, folks. <laughs> Bye-bye.